Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series on a technicality. What we're going to be talking about today is capacitors in your consoles and how to inspect them to make sure they're not leaking or bulging because one of the main issues with retro consoles is that the capacitors either dry up and stop working or they burst and leak electrolytic fluid all over your PCB which can eat away at the traces, corrode the board, and otherwise destroy perfectly working equipment. And we're dealing with something like an FM Towns Marty that is quite expensive. We definitely want to check it out, but we're going to look at a PC engine as well after. But just taking a look at the top of the Marty here, just flipping it over. I shot part of this a couple months ago and kind of shelved it. And you can see a lot of bandages on my hands because I fell off my bike. But as we get into the bottom of it, what we're going to want to do is just look at the capacitors and visually inspect them. Because if they are about ready to burst or if they're leaking, we can see that with the naked eye. It's something that we definitely want to be looking for. Because if you catch it early, you can replace all the capacitors and get rid of any electrolytic fluid that may have leaked out of the board. So that you're going to be able to maintain that equipment a lot longer. Because that's the thing about the capacitors, they were never built to last forever. But taking a look right here at the capacitors on the power board, these are some of the most common to go. And inspecting the top of them, we don't see anything visually that we should be too concerned about. There's no doming on the top. And if you see those kind of rising up, if they're not flat, that's definitely a sign of a bulging capacitor that you would want to remove. And if you just take a look at the side here as well, you can see they look flat. What I like to do is take a little bit of a straight edge. Right here I have a postcard from a bar that my wife brought home. And you'll see as I scrape it across top of the cap, there is no bulging and there is no evidence of that swelling. So at least at this point in time, because they are still working, I'm not going to be replacing them. But I will set a reminder in my phone to come back in six months and check again. Because with this older hardware, you do want to check continuously. I do it every six months because if something does start to go wrong, you want to be able to find it quickly. And there are just a couple caps on the board as well underneath the shielding and they also visually look perfectly fine. So I'm confident that this is going to last for at least six months without having to be looked at. But definitely at some point in time I will have to recap this entire board because they are quite expensive. I don't want it to break and pretty much everything with capacitors so that's older you are at some point going to have to recap the board. Now taking a look at the CD-ROM module, which I do have, it is quite rare and irreplaceable. And the caps on this are perfectly fine as well. So I'm confident that whatever I do with this, I can pop it in the closet for six months, or I can use it for six months, and nothing is going to go wrong with it. But like I said, these may dry up, you may get some audio glitches, you may get some fuzzy video. You'll see symptoms with really low audio when the capacitors start to go bad. But considering this is working perfectly fine, we've inspected the caps, nothing's bulging, nothing's leaking. We know at least that this is good to go for the near future. And you can see right here, we're playing Bubble Bobble and there's no issues with it whatsoever. I cut the audio out, but the audio sounds fine. The video signal's good. We don't really have anything to worry about on the FM Towns Marty. And that's the goal of checking your capacitors because if something is leaking, we want to catch it before it does too much damage. But now taking a look at the PC Engine Duo R, the original Duo was known for having really bad capacitors that would leak and you'd end up losing your audio. The R and the RX are known for having better capacitors, but we still want to take a look inside just to see because it's been about six months since I opened this as well. It does use a security bit on the bottom, so you do need to have the right bit. But what you want to do is just remove all five of those, pinch, and then turn it upside down. But you want to make sure as you lift it, you'll see here that there is a cable going from the CD-ROM drive to the board. You can disconnect it or you can just rest it up against itself. So long as it doesn't fall over, you'll be fine. But taking a look inside, where there is that little vent in the back, there is a lot of dust in this particular area. So with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, I'm going to clean that up because dust is a thermal insulator. Heat will destroy boards. Now this isn't much dust, but if it was worse, dust is going to keep the board warmer and it can over time that heat will degrade the components and can end up destroying your board. This isn't too bad, but while I'm in here, I'm definitely going to clean it up, keep it as nice as possible. But I don't see anything with these caps as well. They all look really nice, and you can see that gunk we took off the board. But there's nothing visually indicating that this board needs a recap either. All the capacitors are nice. There's no bulging. There's no electrolytic fluid evidence. Everything looks exactly how I would expect it to be. And taking a look at the caps over here as well. Everything looks good all the way down the line. There's no bulging. There's no fluid. And if you do have that electrolytic fluid leak, it looks like white dust, kind of like almost mold on the board. It's very easy to tell. You're not going to be confused. But as we pop in a Hue card, Bomberman 94, we're going to power it on and we're going to see that it works perfectly fine. There's a little bit of wiggle in the video signal, but that's just the refresh rate of the camera. 
and everything is working exactly how we would expect it to. And that's the entire point of these. If you open up your consoles, if you check the capacitors, if you keep dust away, they will last as long as possible. I mean, this is all hardware, and at some point in time, something weird is going to happen, and they're all going to break. These aren't going to last a lifetime, unfortunately. That is the sad part of the hobby, is that these things break all the time. And even if you check the capacitors, something else may go wrong. But by checking this, keeping it clean, you'll keep them alive as long as possible and enjoy them. Short of that, thanks so much for watching. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe. We'll be back on Sunday with another video, and then another video on Tuesday in our mainline series. But check your caps, keep dust away, but live forever. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.